Here we go. You can hear me now. Yes, I'm, I'm never sure, you know, which one is. Can you hear me? Can you just confirm to me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's start with this uh, portfolio management uh, during crisis or in the bull market. Um, so the last time we did one was at the end of um, April, uh, which is a month that I'm always struggling to, uh, to say. Uh, so that was six weeks ago. And as usual, uh, timing is everything. And I've been very lucky uh, to pick today because there is a lot to talk about. And uh, I'm pretty sure that after the, this big move that we had uh, across asset classes uh, since the Fed spoke yesterday, um, I might be able to help you at the end of this call. Um, so portfolio management during crisis or in the bull market, as usual for the newcomers, because there are many today, I would like to uh, do a quick introduction uh, presenting myself. So I started to trade in uh, 2000 in Paris on a cash as a cash equity trader uh, for a company called Pierre Charon Gestion, uh, French one. Then I moved to in 2004 uh, in London to work for a hedge fund, uh, first on a long only product, then on a long short product, uh, where we were managing, when I joined 150 in uh, Western Europe to 600 million at the end and uh, the overall company uh, was running around 3 billion. In 2009, I started to do uh, prop trading uh, for infinity capital markets uh, from 2009 to 2018, where I've been running a multi-mandate uh, absolute return uh, across assets, across regions, uh, no constraint, uh, that for nine years. And in 2014, to 2017, I worked for the ITPM as a senior uh, mentor, where I, I mentored uh, 10 to 20 people, <laughs> depending who you ask for. And then uh, since 2018, I launched my own managing um, product, meaning I'm uh, trading and I'm as well mentoring people. And in uh, October of last year, I launched a four by four video series. So. What are we going to be covering today? Today, we're going to try as usual to be starting with uh, the situation across asset classes uh, because it has been moving massively since the last, uh, since we last spoke and it's moving uh, big time today. Um, then again, as usual, money, a bit of money supply, a bit of central banks. Then we're going to be looking at the recession. Then I'm going to be spending a bit more time on uh, trading is easy uh, because this is a concept that um, and we discussed uh, uh, big time when I was working in a trading room at Infinity, where we're always making fun of people going on CNBC and telling you, you know, we are making a lot of money. The reality is much harder. Uh, then we're going to be looking at the sectors and investment styles, the performance, uh, because you want to know how the different strategies are being doing. I want to spend a bit of time on something that many of you are probably aware already, uh, which is the, the fang versus the spy. And then what retail traders uh, have been doing recently and their impact on the market. So let's start with the situation across asset classes. And here I would like to be jumping into, uh, as usual, the trading view, uh, so this is the platform I'm using. It's easy to use. If you don't have any technical analysis or technical background, you should be starting with that tool. This is free, you can do whatever you want and it's nice. So let's start uh, with stocks. Uh, and stocks, the benchmark is the S&P 500. So let's start with the S&P 500. And as we can see, since the lows around the 23rd of March, we have been moving higher. You remember at the start of May, I said I was short and I was short around 2800. So <laughs> if you look at the chart from 2800 to 3200, that is quite painful. Um, and look, I'm not one of these uh, uh, mentors that are gonna bullshit people, uh, that was painful. Um, and again, the only way you survive is through a strict risk management. So now what is the picture? This, the picture is telling you one thing, is you might have what we call an island reversal. So island reversal, for those who you, you don't know, is you get a gap, gap up, which is the gap up here, and then you get a gap down. So very often that can be seen as a reversal in a move. Um, the good thing about island reversal, it's easy 
uh, to put your hard stop loss because the hard stop loss is when you fill the gap. So you have this on the S&P, you have exactly the same on the XLK, which is the ETF for uh, uh, technology and, and why that is important because we know that XLK has been moving the market, has been one of the leaders of this market. So if the leaders, which is trading in big volume today, so really big volume, uh, probably the biggest volume since a since, since long time, and we had a, a, a down gap, a down day, uh, that is at least at the moment pretty significant. Um, so S&P, uh, if you look at the NASDAQ, uh, we made new highs. Uh, for those of you who are uh, familiar with the cup and handle, you can see that there was this, this break before and making new highs. Now it's back uh, to um, where it was before in very strong volume. Um, I like to, to look at the Russell versus the S&P. Uh, so the Russell is considered, as you know, small mid uh, with more um, uh, companies um, in the US than the S&P, which has more, more exposure uh, non-US. And uh, it, it had outperformed massively, uh, underperformed massively uh, since the start of the sell-off. So since uh, the, the lows of March, uh, there has been a catch-up in, in, in the, um, the Russell for the Russell versus the S&P. But as you can see, when there is a sell-off like today, uh, it is catching. So there are talks in the market, I mean, talks is a big word, but there are fears that there is a second wave of the virus coming. I think there are many reasons, as we will see, uh, there has been a massive um, a gap between uh, the news, uh, the economy, and the price action. Uh, so quickly, uh, SPY versus uh, the Russell. Um, so as you can see, those are the things that I'm looking right now. If we look at the VIX, uh, so the VIX, for those who don't know, uh, the VIX is the implied volatility at 30 days on the S&P. It was trending down for the high, from the highs. If you look at the long-term picture, this is still way above the 19%, which is the average. I was, to be perfectly honest, a bit struggling with the volatility index. Um, because if you look, if you've been trading the market for the last couple of weeks, it felt really like the volatility was really, really low. Uh, and despite this low internal volatility or realized volatility, uh, implied volatility was still pretty high. So there are reasons for that. Obviously, people want to hedge themselves and as they are overaging or not overaging themselves, they want to buy protection. They are buying outliers, meaning, you know, uh, uh, implied volatility is, hi is higher. And as well as we're going to see later because of the impact of retail traders buying calls uh, uh, and being very active in the US that is distorting the implied volatility. Um, let's move into uh, uh, the yields. Uh, so here it's a bit distorted, but that's the 10 versus the two. So the US 10 years and the US two years. Uh, and that is important because that could tell you about, you know, a possible uh, inflation coming back into the system and a possible restarting of the economy. As you can see, for the last three sessions, the market is, uh, uh, so there is a flattening of the yield curve, which is extremely negative, uh, quite negative for the banks. Um, and what the Fed told us yesterday is we're going to stay lower for longer. Okay, so the banks, as you've seen, Today, I've been very weak. I think Wells Fargo is down 10%, JP Morgan the same. So all the banks have been done, but that tells you uh, the V-shaped recovery is going to be much harder to do than what some people will, will love to see. Um, looking at the emerging market, emerging market have been doing very well. Uh, so one of the trades as well, uh, and, and, and I'm fine doing it, uh, saying it, I've been wrong. I've been short since 37. Um, it's not so far not really working. If we look at the other um, uh, uh, credit, uh, the ETF that we've been talking in, in March and April, uh, those are here. This is the, um, the IBOX USD investment grade that is close to the old time high. It's same for with the MBB, MUB. Why? Because we know that the Fed is 
actively buying those bonds. So uh, it's not that even they are pretending they are buying every day or every week. Um, high yield, as you can see, high yield is not making new highs. So that tells you that there's going to be um, some problem in the economy and we're going to see some defaults. Uh, this is why high yield is not making new highs. Quickly, because I don't want to be spending too much time on, on, on the asset classes, but uh, um, um, so here it's very misleading. So let's use the CL2 because of the negative. So that's for um, crude oil. Um, so today is down 10%. Um, so it is struggling around the 40 levels. Uh, there are talks that many in uh, um, industrials or let's say um, 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 companies are hedging themselves at 40. So there is this big level uh, uh, um, that is going to be hard, uh, hard to go much higher. Plus uh, the stocks level has been increasing um, as the, dem the demand is not uh, fully recovering. Um, so if we carry on with the other um, um, uh, sorry, commodities, the gold has been trading sideways for the last couple of months uh, between 1660 and 1740. Um, and, and obviously when it's going to go and, and, and the price action, if you look at the middle, uh, at the midterm is telling you that there is a good chance if you look at the odds that it might go higher. Uh, and that means when it's going to go, it might go quickly. If we look at the copper, uh, the copper is, has a very similar uh, chart as the uh, emerging market, EEM, um, very similar. So you have some assets that are extremely correlated uh, currencies now. So the dollar, uh, for those of you who are trading FX, uh, the dollar has been weakening over the last uh, couple of weeks. I mean, it's always hard because if you talk dollar and if you try to tell people, you know, the dollar could be weakening, then you have 50 people jumping at you and say, you know, this is king dollar, it cannot happen. Um, reality, the dollar has been weakening. Reality is FX uh, for um, those currencies have been moving five, six percent in a range of five, six percent for the last couple of years. And the rest, you get the emerging market currencies that are moving big time. Um, when I say emerging market, and if I say Australian dollar, I don't want to be, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say that the Australian dollar is emerging market, but it has been moving big time. And now it recovered fully um, at the start of this week, uh, which is quite something. Um, and, and then I have different stocks that I'm following. So what I suggest to do is coming back into, um, not my interactive broker, but uh, where is that? Uh, I want to go back into the presentation. Okay. Um, so quickly looking at the balance sheet of the Fed and the ECB. As you know now, uh, most central banks in the world have been extremely active since the start of this crisis. So if we look at the, uh, at the, the balance sheet of um, the Fed, it went from uh, seven, from 4.1 trillion to 7 trillion now. So in, in less than, uh, than two or three months, so 3 trillion is more. Um, and every week they are committing more and are happy to commit more. Uh, and one of the examples is, I think it was on Monday, where they said that they're going to lower uh, the level for the, uh, the PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. So the Fed is very active, same time, on the right hand side in, in, in red, we have the ECB, which as well has been extremely active, uh, where the balance sheet is now standing at 5.6 trillion uh, euro. Um, more importantly, if you look at charts on, on a weekly basis, you can see here the Fed balance sheet weekly changes, uh, where here this is the crisis of the great financial crisis 2008, 2009. And here you can see what happened recently. So you can see the magnitude of the intervention of the inter intervention, sorry, of the Fed, which was doing uh, half a trillion uh, every week for three weeks or four weeks. So that is just immense. So similarly, if you look at the money supply, the M2 that we covered in uh, I think it was mid, mid, mid April, uh, you can see that the money stock uh, billions of dollars on the on the left hand side is just going to the roof. And similarly on the weekly uh, uh, change annualized, this is just going uh, ballistic. So 
we uh, we all made uh, uh, um, clear that there ha there has been this intervention of the central banks. I think yesterday, when we listened to to Powell, uh, uh, the chairman of the Fed, there was some some comments saying, you know, it's surprising that the the, uh, the dots of uh, the Fed. Uh, are now pricing nothing to happen until 2022 at best. And I think two out of the 17 FOMC members uh, only were looking for higher interest rate in 2022. But actually, if you have been checking the euro dollar futures over the last months, you can see here that the euro dollar futures are telling us that the Fed is expecting and was expected to do nothing for the, at least until 2023. So that means probably no pickup, no V-shape recovery, no inflation, no blah, 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 no blah, blah, blah. But the Fed is going to be there for two to three years, uh, which is very long. Uh, but you should not be surprised uh, uh, when you see something like this. Next point is now it's official. We had, I think, I don't know if it was on Monday or on Tuesday, uh, but, but uh, the National Bureau of Economic Research officially uh, announced the recession that started in February uh, 2020. Um, and that means we had 128 months, of course, which makes the longest in the history of US business cycles dating, dating back to 1854. So to visualize, that is something that I've been doing and you have in the four by four. This is the cycle that we recently have. So as you can see, a very long cycle, economic cycle. Um, now it's over. And the question is obviously, when are we gonna restart? Um, but more importantly, I had many questions this week through emails, through tweets about people who want to know about, you know, on one hand, can I have, a, can I have the end uh, of, of the economic cycle, the recession over the last three, three months and more, and asset prices going through the roof. As we talked massively since the intervention of uh, the Fed on the 23rd of March and before with the ECB, uh, they have been pumping up prices and it gave confidence to market participants that central banks were in town to be buying assets. Um, so if you look and if you listen to what we've done uh, when you put a short before if you don't put a short but when I was putting a short you need to be realistic on, on what could happen in your face uh, and, and what is the Fed doing so I want here to be to, to take a bit of more time with you because I know that it's, it's, it's hard uh, uh, for many traders, it is hard these days for my mentees. It is harder than, than usual. Uh, why? Because, you know, if you, if you look on Twitter, if you listen to, um, to, to people on TV, they will tell you that trading is easy. So it feels like, you know, people sold that start in January, at the start of, of let's say, February at 3,300. They bought back at 2,300, went long, sold, so this is complete bullshit. So you need to be extremely careful of what you are listening and not be confused because at the end of the day, uh, you need to follow your process and not uh, following people that are bullshitting. So one of the things that has been happening recently is many retail traders that we're gonna see are jumping into uh, options. And make no mistake, if you have so many re retail trading educators moving into options. This is not only by conviction, but this is mostly because there is a huge market. So I know how hard that could be for the fear of missing out, but there were, there were uh, many things that were coming uh, on, on the screening, like the stocks, the number of stocks above the 50 day moving average. So this is the next slide. As you can see, that was uh, yesterday. The stocks in the S&P, so here this is a chart from uh, barchart.com, where this is the percentage of stocks above 50-day averages. 
at 91%. So that was one of the, signal telling, uh, of the signals telling us, you know, the market is really overextended. You had the NASDAQ composite, as we saw before, making new all-time high. We get the FANG, ex-Google, making new highs. We get the S&P on Monday or Tuesday flat on, uh, for 2020, the NASDAQ up 10%. And we had some crazy move on single names like Hertz, like uh, uh, Chesapeake, like uh, 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 JFIN. And those stocks, you know, over the last two to three weeks have been moving in an absolute insane way. So us as a trader, we need to be careful when they're, they're always, they're always going to be noise. Okay. So if you are in a trading room, there is always someone who is making money. There is always someone who is losing money. When you're a trading room, you're going to have CNBC. When you're at home, you get CNBC, you get BBC, you get CNN, you get whatever. Me, you know, since I left the trading room, I, have, I don't have any TV, no CNBC, no whatever, no Bloomberg. It's about my process. It's extremely easy to follow someone on Twitter pretending to be a superhero. And this is why, you know, each time we were in the trading room, there was this guy coming after a big move saying, look, I was long, I was short. We were saying trading is easy. So I want you to gain confidence on that and be careful. Uh, um, it's not because you are where you are in the, your learning curve that, uh, um, that you, you can't be making money. So I want to be looking as usual quickly at what the, the US sectors have been doing. So for, for those of you who know my process, um, I mean, it's not a magical process, it's just looking after the S&P 500, we look at the 11 sectors of the S&P 500. Try to understand what is making the, mar making the market moving, uh, depending on different time frames, because that's gonna tell you a lot about uh, how the market is behaving. So if we look at those 11 sectors over the last five days, you can see, so that's something that uh, updated uh, two hours ago. You can see that the financials and the materials were pretty weak over the last five days. Why? Because financials, as we discussed with the Fed, with yields going low, with uh, uh, the, two, the 10 versus the two, the yield curve flattening, this is not helping the bank. Energy is same, if you get the WTI down 10%, this is not helping. If you look on the monthly time frame, which is, you know, if you look over the months, the S&P is up 6%, but actually it was much more than that before. Uh, you can see that the, the sectors that were underperforming were the defensive ones, the consumer staples and the healthcare. Contra uh, on the other hand, industrials and financials, consumer discretionary, everything that is the possibility of a recovery was outperforming. So what we had since the versus the, the start of May, uh, at the start of May, we had very low visibility. Uh, we didn't know exactly when the US economy will reopen. And the beauty of, um, of the US consumer is they go very quickly back uh, to, uh, uh, to resuming consumption. Uh, and actually the reopening of the US economy happened much quicker and much before many European countries. So instead of having a window of three months of closed country, you're gonna have only two months. We're not gonna go back to 100% quickly. It's gonna be 85, 90, 90%. But there were many, many hopes that you know, instead of pricing Armageddon, we are pricing, let's say, Alpha Armageddon. So we have industrial and some others doing better. But if you look at the big picture, you're gonna have those different time frame on the weekly, on the monthly, on the quarterly. You can do that as well on the two years, on the five years. Similar to the US sectors, I love and I like to be looking at the US invest, investment styles. As you know, there is all one of the uh, one of the the immense investment styles are the, uh, is value uh, versus growth. Okay, so we know that in the long run, growth has been outperforming value massively, um, and over the last five days, value has been struggling uh, because the growth names have been doing very well. But over the last month, value has been doing better than the growth. So the question is always: Are we 
is it an, an end of this long-term cycle? Long-term trend, I mean, always hard to predict and time, but that tells you what is making the market uh, 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 moving at any point in time. So you can do the same of these uh, uh, um, US sectors and US investment styles with, uh, uh, I strongly advise you to do that. This is something that I spend a lot of time with my mentees when we do the mentoring program is about building your infrastructure. And when you build your infrastructure, you want to see quickly what is moving in the market. So that sectors, investment styles, that can be commodities, that can be country, countries, that can be industries. The beauty of the market now is we have many ETFs. So very quickly, we can know what has been moving depending on the time frame. So again, you go on Yahoo Finance, you go on investing.com. If you want to have something more advanced, you can go take Reuters Metastock, you can take whatever you want but really it's, it's about getting the picture quickly. So after this, and as I know, uh, because most of you are retail traders, um, there has been a lot of frustration uh, of retail traders and professional traders because we have new players coming into town, which are the retail traders using platform like Robinhood. As we discussed in March, um, there has been many, many new uh, accounts opened since, uh, uh, since February, since the sell-off. Uh, first, because people uh, uh, across the world were uh, um, standing at home, uh, had not much to do. Uh, so when you, don't have, when you can't bet on, 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 on football or on basketball, you start to bet on, on, on the market. And secondly, if we look at the US, uh, because of this uh, uh, tax, uh, not this tax, sorry, this check uh, coming every month, this $2,000 check, uh, people suddenly sometimes were making more money than, than their salaries, so they jump into trading. And one of the platforms that if you're not aware, that's probably because you don't have an account on Twitter, because it has been making all 90% of the tweets uh, of FinTweet over the last five days is Robinhood. So Robinhood is having a platform where it's telling you what are the stocks that are more uh, uh, um, uh, bought by uh, um, traders on, on that platform. So as you can see, there's a ranking. So F for Ford, G for General Electric and so forth. And the second one that is interesting, you can see with the ranking, the number of, of new account that uh, have been buying or selling a stock. So here, this is Microsoft, for instance, and you see the correlation with the stock and the number of stock of, of accounts open with Robinhood. So what is happening is most of these retail traders in the US, if you are a, a US retail trader, you only get access to two times leverage. So if you get, 500, 1,000, 2,000 dollars, and you want to be buying Microsoft, or if you want to be buying Amazon, you can't be buying Amazon because Amazon costs 2,500. So if you want to have access to, to those stocks, what you need to be doing is to go through options. So again, what we have seen is 60 to 80 percent of the educators in, 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 in retail have been telling people go for options, not for conviction, but because they know that the market is there. So in the US, if you get $2,000, you only can be uh, uh, um, uh, managing $4,000 max. So that means your, your account is still very small. So what people are gonna be doing is they're gonna be trading through options. And the worst thing is they are gonna go for weekly options. So options are maturing every Friday and they are maturing every third Friday of, of the months of uh, March, uh, June, September and December, which is the biggest expiry. So that is something that we should be aware of and I'm working with my mentees each time. Next week, next Friday, we get the biggest expiry. And if you think about the biggest expiry, the last one was uh, mid-March and that was when the market was at 2300. So 
make no mistake, between 2300 and 3200, there are many positions. But what happened is every day now, and that happened actually from January and February already. So when I was doing webinars in January, February, I was already trying to tell people, you know, you should be spotting where is the activity on the option. And here you'll be looking at the option chain. So if we look at the option chain of Apple, um, that was a couple of days ago. And on the left hand side, we get the calls. And here on the right, on the right hand side, we get the put. So as you can see, and the stock was trading something like 335. And you have, you had 423 calls that traded versus 209,000 puts. So that gives you a put call ratio, sorry, ratio twice of 0 0.5. So there is a huge uh, 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 discrepancy between the call and the put. And those Robin Hood traders, and when I say Robin Hood traders, there is nothing, uh, sarcastic and not making any criticism. It's just retail traders, the Schwab, all those different platforms have been massively pumping up stocks by buying the calls. So if we look at the, the, this example, uh, we have 423 calls versus 200,000 200, puts, put call ratio of 0 0.5. On the same day, the volume on the cash was standing at 37 million. Okay. So the delta, I calculated the, the, the delta on that day. The delta of the call represented 6 billion and the delta of the put represented 1.5 billion. So overall, on that day, you get a delta of four or, or roughly 5 billion just by retail traders uh, trading those names. Uh, so that tells you about the uh, uh, intensity and the strength of retail traders buying an uh, intervention into this market. So the conclusion is uh, if you've been trading the market for more than two, two months, um, here I use something a bit stupid. I use the port of forces to try to explain to people that, you know, Robin Hood or retail traders, they are, this is the risk of a new entrant where you, you get a position. So you need to think what could happen. On top of that, you know, as professional and all the professionals have been uh, mourning, complaining about the liquidity in the market. So if suddenly we get millions of people trading the market, maybe they are making mistakes, but they are providing liquidity. So what you need to do is always try to identify the new drivers. When I started to trade in 2000, I was a pure, flow trader. So I was, we had the software which was giving us through the color if investors or retail were buying stock. So when the stock was going up, you got green, 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 green. And when the stocks were going down, we had red, red, red. And literally I was buying when it was going green and the opposite. So we should not always be blaming those people. What, we, what you should be doing is try to do two things. You need to identify the tools to spot where, where are the moves. And secondly, you need to respect the price action. So what I said since 2750 to 2800 on the S&P, I said, I'm short because versus the economy, because of many things I'm struggling, but the price action as a trader feels, feels squeezy. It was squeezy. It, it went from 2,800 to 3,200. You know, you can't always be blaming the market and say, look, oh, the market is wrong. There is something broken. Something is always broken. This is the beauty of the market, but you, we need to make something out of it. So quickly for the tools, uh, two tools that helped me uh, recently. So here, this is on barchart.com. So if you go on barchart.com, you can find uh, the top um, X, uh, uh, stocks in terms of number of jobs or options traded on the day. So that was, I think it was yesterday. So as you can see for Apple yesterday, 1.2 million options traded with a put call ratio of 0 0.47. Um, Hertz that I mentioned before, massively trading through options, option volume of 640,000 uh, uh, 
uh, uh, sorry, options, put call ratio normally should be uh, lower. Same for with Facebook. And the second chart that I liked, which is from uh, stockcharts.com, which is the, uh, the CBOE options equity put call ratio. So probably you've seen many, many tweets. Um, and more or less the idea is if people, if investors are massively buying calls versus put, that means the move should be, could be overextended. And over the last five days, we, are, we had many, many, many signals. So what I don't want to be telling you is two things. Trading is easy. And even more important that back trading is easy. This is just not true, okay? But what happened if you look at many signals, if you look at equity put call ratio, if you look at moves on certain stocks, if you look at uh, 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 the number of the volume that was done on certain shares, there was like some very important flag to the market. So if we look at, at Apple, you know, and, and, and something that I mentioned before, uh, Apple on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, Monday and Tuesday traded abnormal volume on options. And in the meantime, Apple traded, you know, the next day up 2% versus the market breadth, which is, you know, the number of stocks up versus the numbers of stocks down. 80% uh, of the stocks were, were down uh, with only 20% stocks that were up. So if you were been following the market breadth of the S&P 500 and the overall market, there has been a massive deterior deterioration of uh, the overall market. We know, and here, this is the next slide. This is the SPY here um, in blue versus the top five holding in the SPYs. In the SPY. So the five type, uh, 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 top five holding in the SPY are Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Google. Um, as you can see, there has been an acceleration over this week on those uh, stocks. Um, uh, Amazon made new highs. Apple was just on the tier. And the only one that was really suffering versus the other ones was Google. Uh, but if you, the conclusion of all of this is if you put aside the performance of those 20% stocks, uh, the S&P is more or less flattish or down. The thing is, there are always be there will always be uh, uh, stocks that are going to perform and stocks that are going to be underperform. So what we have seen over the last months, and there has been some uh, dispersion and rotation in the market. Rotation because suddenly the value of perform grows, even uh, for two weeks. That was something we haven't seen for quite a long time. We have seen as well that all the industrials, all the, the sectors that were destroyed, uh, recovered half of the over underperformance over a month. And uh, if we look at uh, uh, the stocks that have done really, really well, uh, like the software, which I was short and I'm still short, which I'm really, really uh, wrong, but uh, okay. again, I'm okay to admit it, they have been doing very, very well. So. That is important to understand the drivers, to understand what is making the market. And hopefully that's going to help you uh, making the difference between, oh, it's just because, you know, there is, uh, the market is different from the economy. That's just nonsense. You know, it's way too easy. Um, so I can bet you that the people that tell you, that told you, you know, there is, uh, uh, the market is not the economy are going to tell you now, or I sold the top of the market. So be careful. So quickly, before uh, going into the questions, um, the four by four video series. Um, so I built this product last year. I launched it in October, 2019. Uh, so hopefully this is a very comprehensive video course um, to get a professional investment process. Uh, so here I'm gonna be using the macro analysis and you're gonna be using it with me. Uh, for ID generation through the macro, bottom up, special situation, and active trading. So, I've been trading, as I told you, for 20 years now. I've done long only, long short, short term, mid term, long term, hedge fund. Um, I've done a bit of everything. So, you're going to have 40 plus videos, you're going to have 50 plus Excel spreadsheets. Um, so, here I didn't uh, uh, renew the. Um, 
completely the, the spreadsheet which was from another day. But you're going to have many, many um, uh, tools to build your infrastructure. So just before the call, I had a very nice email from someone who is halfway uh, watching the videos. Um, that is even better because that is someone who has done the video of the competition and that is confirming to me again that this is way above and actually that the product is really, really good. So for those of you who have interest, you can contact me and getting more information. So uh, don't be shy, send me an email. So q and I open now. Um, I hope first that I try to answer some questions about you know, the dichotomy between the market and the economy. It is clear that has been a struggle for many of us uh, to see this market making new all-time high when we have been um, staying at home, uh, where uh, we have seen the unemployment, we have seen the economy uh, deterioration. So that means you need, you need to limit your growth and net exposure. Uh, in terms of net exposure, this is something that we cover massively through the 4x4 four four, uh, video series. And in terms of risk management, that is important to do. Um, quickly, because someone sent me an email before, that was a question from D, uh, about being a part-time trader and what strategy to follow and how to generate ideas. And quickly, I want to jump into, um, into one Excel document uh, that I just built to, for you to understand. Uh, I know the frustration for um, uh, most of you in terms of ID generation. So that's something that I build. This is similar to the four by four. So when we do the mentoring, my, my mentee is after session six normally. They come to me and say, look, Greg, I'm frustrated because I generate three, three to five IDs. But, you know, there's only one trade. So if we take the example of the capital of $25,000, you can do whatever you want, you can change it with the leverage of two times. So here, instead of doing the complete bullshit of going through options uh, in the US, only options, I say, okay, this is two times, this is like the US. So that gives you a gross exposure of $50,000. If you are in Europe, you can have access to a four times leverage. So the trade size, and here this is the four by four, this is advanced risk management. I said to people, you know, what you should not be doing is more than 10% position. So let's say now we are only generating one trade per week. So I know what you're going to say. One trade per week actually is very poor. I could be doing much more. One trade per week gives you, obviously, 52 trades per year. So now let's, let's have the assumption that we are not superior, that we are starting. So we have a hit ratio. One third of our trades are winners. One third are flat and one third are losers. When we lose, we lose 7%. When we are flat, we are small down, we lose 2%. And when we are winners, we make 12. So if you think about the blue sky scenario, what you read in the book, which is making three times more than what you make, you know, what you lose, you are far away from this. So that gives you an overall p and of $1.3,000. So that is a return of 5%. And here, all the assumptions are pretty poor. So now imagine that you only get a ratio of two to one. Suddenly, on a yearly basis, you do around 9%. And here, this is against 52 IDs per year. So the bottom line of hopefully of all of this is for people where it's not i understand that for most of you it is not your job uh, to generate ideas uh, 10 hours per day or to be mentoring people i think if you start to have a process like the four by four and you can dedicate five hours of your time every week five to ten hours you can be generating one to two trades every week. And then you're gonna have those kinds of returns. I'm not gonna bullshit people. If you are looking for the 25% plus, that means the risk management is gonna be completely different. So don't go for those uh, stories. Uh, similarly, I know that there are many of you who have long only products in the sense that 
is uh, uh, very often because of tax reason, depending on which country you are, uh, 401 or ISA, uh, you're gonna have only access to long only products. I think here, I have many questions of people telling me what to do, how to do it. When I joined this hedge fund in London, uh, the first I had the long only product and where we did a bit of hedging with uh, indexes and options. Uh, so I hope I can help you here. I know that the four by four, even if you're long only, is going to help you massively to generate uh, uh, qualitative ideas. Okay, let's jump into uh, the other questions and hopefully you have some. Um, uh, so if, if, does this mean that market makers are short calls of Apple and clients are long calls of Apple? Um, that means that the market man, maker need to do the uh, delta hedging and the gamma hedging. So this is roughly what they do. Uh, so the stock market is the economy. I mean, I mean, stock market is not the economy. I've seen that before. Um, stock market is not the economy. Uh, very often when you are a sales trader uh, and you're not trading the market, uh, at one stage, you know, if you don't understand what's going on, you have no chance. And that comes again from a background for someone 20 years ago who was only uh, trading the price. So I have absolutely no idea, you know. Um, uh, and, and I'm not saying, what I'm trying to tell people is to, you need to get a process. If you don't have this process, it's not going to work. Uh, there is no discount code for the course because the course is good and I'm not offering at the moment any discount. Um, how much money do you manage personally? Uh, so this, this year, I, in, in January, I opened an account with 100,000 um, pounds. That's part of my money. Uh, I just wanted to see uh, and to be real and, uh, and and make people understand that I'm on the same page as they are uh, in terms of uh, money managing. This is with Interactive Worker. And if you want to know the performance, I'm up 6.5%. Um, as you were short the market a few months ago, you must be down this year. <laughs> Those, I mean, this is typical. I mean, it's, I'm not, as I told you, I'm 6.5% up. Um, I can tell you that if you ask me these questions is you have un, you have probably never watched the four by four video series because you have never done uh, proper risk management and proper uh, uh, way of doing growth and net exposure and ID generation. Uh, Cesar, uh, what is the max drawdown limit you think is healthy for a beginner retail trader? Um, as I said in the four by four, if you don't 5% for the high watermark or 5% on a monthly basis, um, you should be cutting your position by half. Uh, in that chat, there is someone uh, I work with uh, between 2004 and 2008. Uh, and I can tell you he's, he's very good. And when we were uh, uh, working on that long only product, the mandate was after being done 5% in the months, we have to reduce the exposure by half. And I think this is a good way of doing things uh, because you can be down another 5% in 50% of your position. And then after, if you're down 10% from the top, uh, then this is it, you really need to take a step back. You need to have different stop losses. If you are trading short term, you need to have a daily stop loss. If you get a trading, you know, uh, you need to have a, month, a monthly stop loss. Uh, so 5% is a healthy, uh, where you reduce and, and, and you rethink about your exposure. Um, how many trades should you generate a week and how much time should you spend a week on generating ideas? So, I mean, um, I mean, first there is no should, uh, even if my English is poor, I don't think there is any should. Uh, it's more like, you know, the time you can dedicate. If you are, I got this question from Doug, and, and asking me, you know, uh, how many ideas can be generating. Um, if you only get uh, five hours, you're not going to be generating 15 ideas. If the market is moving like crazy, you're not going to be trading like crazy. Um, so I think what is important is, is having, uh, building a portfolio that is balanced. Uh, um, 
obviously it's easy to say, much harder to do. Um, in terms of, I, I got this question, what percentage should I aim for? Should I be aiming for 50 to 100 percent returns if I'm trading options? Uh, look, uh, I don't know what to say with that. I think if you're trading aiming for 50 to 100 percent, um, I think you're going to come back in six months time to me and say, look, I lost all, all my money. I need to do something and, and I need to review. I'm really concerned to see so many questions like this because that tells me that there are many indicators that are selling this 50 to 100 percent returns and it's just it, 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 it's not happening if you make 50 to 100 you are trading binary options so it doesn't work like this um in terms of your mentees what was their best performance during the mentoring period <laughs> so there is something that is very human is when you make money you're very loud and when you lose money or your flat, you don't uh, say much. Um, so uh, last year, I had a success. I had two successful mentees uh, who came back to me, and one was managing 25 and was up 20% after six months, and the other one was managing, I think, $200,000, and he was up 40% for his family. Okay, so that's. But here I don't want to be misleading people. I don't, I, I don't want to tell people, you know, oh, uh, all my clients are making 20% plus. My idea is if we can be making consistently between five and 15%, that is good. Um, and, and, and this is what I'm targeting. Uh, so Joshua, uh, nice haircut. Thank you, I'll take this one. Um, how are you generating ideas these days? Are you still using ISM? Uh, no, ISM. Um, so what I do uh, with the ISM, it, it is very, uh, as you know, it, it is giving you a trend. Uh, these days, this is not much of a leading indicator. The good thing about the ISM is if you look across the sectors, they're going to tell you which sectors are trending. We know for a fact which sectors are trending, which sec the sectors that are defen uh, defensive are doing better than the other ones. So you need to be using other filtering processes. And this is why I have the four by four video series. And this is why over the years, I always try to find new tools to generate ideas. So if you ask me what I've been trying to do over the last, uh, uh, since the, the start of this year, is looking a lot into options. So looking where is the volume on options on every single day? Where is the activity? Where is the volume? Where is the, where are the open interest? That is a way of doing ID generation. And then I'm going to be looking at macro. Uh, when I when I go short emerging market, this is because I got a view on the dollar. This is because I have a view on emerging market. If I want to do some uh, uh, um, uh, bottom up, I'm going to be looking at stocks with very high quality. When I do price action, I'm going to be looking at the leaders of the market. So I'm going to try to be looking at breakout. Um, what else? Did you say 100 or did you say 600? I put 100, 100 of my money. Uh, but I know people are fascinated by you know, uh, knowing how much people are managing. So uh, my first boss, to give you an example, was um, a huge credit trader at BNP, really big. And he came into the world of trading equity because there was more, it was fun, it was in 99, 2000, 2001. And he always told me from day one, you know, don't be fascinated by people that can tell you about the size of their book. This is complete, complete bullshit. And I know where it is coming from and it's gonna be endless. I have absolutely no interest in those conversations. Um, so, you know, especially very often, we need to put everything into perspective into the size of uh, the account of retail traders. Uh, which broker you suggest for opening of trading account? I'm using interactive broker. I'm not taking any commissions. Please, uh, there is a video online uh, explaining you don't go for dodgy brokers or brokers that are recommended by uh, 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 very often 
by educators because they are taking a commission because this is dodgy. So make sure that uh, your uh, broker is regulated. Make sure that he's offering a good platform, uh, that you're paying low commissions, you know, interactive broker, very low commissions. You're gonna have a way of building your track record. And if you go with that track record with, to hedge funds, to top traders, after two years, they might be looking at it. Um, uh, do you think a V-shaped recovery is still possible or is it more likely we will see a U-shaped recovery? Uh, I like the, the, the swoosh um, recovery, the Nike recovery, which is, you know, slow uh, recovery. I don't think we're going to have a V-shaped recovery. We can, I mean, on one hand, you can say that China is rebounding like there is no tomorrow. But I think damage is just massive uh, on, on our economies. And plus, we were already coming into uh, a, a, a slowing economies um, and economies that had many imbalances. So it's going to be hard to have a V-shaped recovery. Um, is oil market past the worst in your opinion? Yes, I think it passed the worst, uh, definitely. Uh, because unless we go back into a, a second wave uh, uh, with complete uh, lockdown, uh, what happened, Eduardo, is for a couple of months, we had absolutely no demand. So the demand came down 30 to 50%. Uh, that only happened once over the last uh, centuries. So it, it's, I don't, I mean, uh, there is always a possibility, but uh, the, the odds are very low. What you need to go through now is, is a demand that's not going to be picked up uh, immediately. And you need to be dealing with a lot of, of, of stocks. Uh, so you need to reduce the stocks and keeping in mind that at $40, as we've seen, you have many producers, as the OPEC meeting showed, that are ready to sell whatever they want. So the quota worked until it doesn't. Uh, and the meeting that they had last month or last week showed that there is no agreement anymore. Um, how many positions should you have in your account portfolio? Um, what about you join the four by four? Um, I think the concentration, as I said, is five to 10%. There, is, there are good videos about concentration, um, um, which is well explained. Um, that is something that I've discussed into another video. So look at YouTube, it's, it's well explained. Um, what else? Um, the best traders are unemotionless, right? Okay. <laughs> no, I, I think, you know, when you're trading, um, then maybe that's me. Uh, we are all different. You, you need to have emotion. Um, you need to feel the market. Um, you know, it's, there is always this concept of trading the plan and, and planning the trade. Okay. So like you have a, you have a plan and you just, you know, trade the plan. And the reality, there will be many components that's going to be affecting your trading. And, and my philosophy and my strongest conviction is you need to be using discretionary, okay? There are very few uh, black boxes, like the assignments of this one that are working, and you need to have some feeling. Um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm fine with that. Um, have you ever had mentees that you just cannot help? And why is that the case? Um, I will say that I have between one to 5% of the mentees who I'm struggling. Uh, I think it's more a, a match, um, a personal match, which happens very rarely. It's like anyone in, 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 the, um, in the world. My, my duty as a, as a provider of a service is to make, uh, uh, to offer the, and to put all my efforts for, for my mentees to be successful. And, uh, and that means, you know, spending the time, building the infrastructure together, explaining all the concepts. Uh, so yes, sometimes there are some struggling, uh, but hopefully, um, uh, fingers crossed, I think people are happy with both the four by four and the mentoring. Um, after your course, do you recommend when starting out to focus only on the US market first and then branch out? Um, so only US market, I think what, doing the US market is, is much easier because we get all the information. So we get the macro information that is for free and we get all the data as well that are for free. If you do European, you can find the information. 
not all of it, but it's not going to be as good. So the easiest one in terms of getting information is the US. My philosophy is if you live in Europe, if you live in Australia, you're better off trading as well the Australian market if you live in Australia because you get a better knowledge and understanding of Australian companies that I have. If I, as a French, I'm going to be better at telling you what is the best company in, 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 in France than you are non-living in France. Why? Because we understand, because we, we, uh, we grew up with those companies. So my philosophy is you don't want to be stuck with one market. You don't want to be stuck with one asset and you want to be trying as much as possible uh, to be looking at different things. Uh, that is my view as well, because I think otherwise, uh, uh, intellectually, you just dry up and, and you get bored. Um, do you write your own macros to download data from investing.com or did you get someone online to help? <laughs> I'm looking at video 19 on your course and looking for a quicker way to download returns data for country industries ETF. So I've done everything on my own, uh, which for someone who is struggling with uh, coding was something. Um, the whole idea of the four by four was to make sure that people get information. And if I could do it, they could do it. Okay. I don't want to be selling a product to tell people I sell videos at $2,000 and you help yourself find the information. This is not my problem. Uh, so I know it's, it's what the problem with, as you're mentioning, investing.com is if you put macro, if you do phishing, um, they're gonna, you're gonna have limit on the data to, to download. So you can be using different websites. Um, what else? Um, uh, do you think hedge funds will still be recruiting traders? Yes, they will always. They will always be uh, uh, needing uh, traders. So what happened between, let's say, 2014 to 2018, most hedge funds wanted to um, um, hire uh, quantitative traders, okay? Because that was in vogue and, you know, putting the model. I can bet you that over the last 18 months, all the quantitative models uh, went through the toilet. And that means they're gonna come back and say, oh, what about the traders? What about the discretionary traders? So hedge funds are always looking for talents. Um, so yes. Um, so what else do you have? Gregoire, do you think not being employed by trading company will give a disadvantage in terms of being on top of the newest trading technology, gadgets, trends, etc.? cetera? Um, or can you make sure you are staying on top of the industry now that you have been away from the desk? Oh, um, the best answer first is PNL is doing the talking. So as long as I'm making money, I feel like something is working. Look, there will always be people that are going to be better than you. There are always, you know, if, if you're trading the news, if you're trading the news and you are sitting like me at home most of the time, you know that your system is not going to be as quick as someone uh, working for a prop, uh, for prop bank or, you know, a hedge fund. So that means you need to find other ways of doing it. Um, the thing is, um, uh, 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 I try to change my style. I used to be very aggressive in trading. I've done that for years. Um, I was successful, not crazy successful. I was okay. And then I get bored intellectually. I just dried up. I get enough. And then I remember, you know, the time when I was doing hedge funds, when I was meeting companies, when I was thinking a bit, even if I, it was for four years, you know, that helped me massively. So in terms of infrastructure, you know, I think I'm fine. Um, I always smile when I see those, um, those photos of people having six screens or 12 screens and five PCs. And, and I know that it doesn't change anything that much. One of my ex-colleagues was extremely successful and he was quick to react, trading literally sizes uh, every month, every day, just beyond belief, okay? Um, he was doing it, he needs that, but in the meantime, he knows that, you know, he wants to change his style and it's gonna be different. So yes, yes and no. If you have a good one to three years track record via interactive brokers, can you still go to a hedge fund no matter what your age is? 
I think there are many hedge funds. Um, it, 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 the question is, is, is getting access to them. And the, the question is, is the fit that you will get with them. Um, I think one to two years is a bit, one year is too small. Two years is good. So you need something and you need to have a connection with them. So when you go for hedge fund, you need to offer something. When I joined the hedge fund in London, I had four years experience, but I was actively trading. I was trading the French market. My boss was Austrian, so he was trading Eastern Europe, he was trading Germany. He was not necessarily trading, you know, France. He was not trading Benelux, the way I was doing. I was trading shorter term than he was, so there was a fit. If you are 35, you need to say, okay, guys, I can't offer Maybe I'm coding, I'm not that good, but what I can offer is something different. So you need to think, if you have a plan, if you are 20, if you're 30, if you're 40, if you want to work in the industry, you need to think, okay, what can I offer now? And if I go in two years time, at least with my track record, what, which gaps should I fill? If you come into hedge fund and you say, I can't do any coding, I'm rubbish with Excel, I'm rubbish with Bloomberg, I'm rubbish with Reuters, it's going to be hard because people will tell you, oh, it's going to take us three months to do, uh, um, um, the, um, to do the training. You keep a journal and what do you put inside it? So the journal four by four video series, you'll get everything you want. Um, how many hours does the four by four take? Um, so maybe in the chat you should ask this question uh, but um, you get roughly 30 hours videos okay so i think you probably need to watch them two or three times at least two times so that's probably 60 hours of watching you have the excel spreadsheet you need to get familiar with it so it's going to take you a bit of time honestly I, I, um, it's not only because i build it but i think it works really really well and as i said the feedback that I had from people that are new or people that have done the competition is really outstanding. Uh, and, and I know why um, the competition is not happy then. Um, uh, what else? So let's, let. what time is it? Oh, we do have a bit of time. What is a good hit ratio? As, as we've seen before, the hit ratio of 33% uh, uh, can be good if, if your winners are pretty big. Um, what you need to do is uh, you need to limit your downside. Okay, uh, limiting your downside is key. So when I have a rough time, when I'm not good at reading the market, I want to make sure that my downside is limited. And I always take this example, 2017 is my worst year. I was down three and a half percent. Okay. Um, and, and, and that means in terms of hit ratio, um, uh, the best traders that I've seen uh, are the traders where you get a position and when it's going your way, you increase the position and you're very big into that position. And when you do shit is when you get a bad position and you increase the bad position and that is terrible. Do you use Bloomberg terminal? If no, then why not? Isn't it better than Reuters? So I use Bloomberg Terminal for 15 years. Okay, um, it's nice. It's a good product. It costs two thousand dollars. Reuters Metastock. Now I pay hundred hundred dollars per month. It's everything that I want. It's got everything that I want, um, and, and it's good enough for me. Um, really depends on your style. Bloomberg Terminal is nice because you get everything on the same platform. Uh, you can have IB chat, you know, it's like you're talking with your friends. Is it worth $2,000? I don't think so anymore. If, I, if these days um, I was running, uh, um, um, let's say, a trading room, uh, I probably ask people to be moving, moving from Bloomberg, uh, not all of them, but some of them. Um, uh, have you watched Billions? No. Um, no. Um, um, the calendar spreads. Um, I think I already answered this calendar spreads question. I, 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 I know again where it is coming from, this calendar spread. Uh, uh, and I know some, some 
some educators who want to sell options course are pushing for calendar spreads. Uh, um, this is uh, ask them, um, but not me. Um, how do you get Thomson Reuters in your Excel? Uh, because there is a, a, an API, so there is a literally a live uh, uh, prices, um, um, and that is extremely helpful. Um, uh, Kevin, when are you buying Lulu? Uh, so uh, I think they came with the numbers because I was short. <laughs> at the start of this weekend I covered before the, the earnings. Where is it trading now? Uh, Kevin, let me know where is Lulu trading? Lulu Lemon, Lulu Lemon after market. I think they are the numbers after after our oh oh is it oh 285 oh, shit I should have kept that one um yeah so I'm not gonna buy Lulu um what else do we have? Um, are you subscribed to any news outlet like uh, Wall Street Journal? No. Um, what else do we have? Uh, um, hi, Gregoire. How can I convince people around me that active trading ID generating weekly to trend can be better than buy blindly buying popular ETF monthly and those or those so-called long-term investing? Um, Look, if you look at the long-term performance um, of the S&P, which is making 7-8% every year, it, it is destroying 95% um, of the active, uh, uh, active investors. So uh, numbers are talking, uh, passive, passive could, could work. Uh, the thing is, every, I mean everything, a lot have been distorted over the recent years. So, uh, and the timing is key. So I had the same question. I had many people coming to me after the sell-off and say, you know, look, Greg, I went long at the start of the year, open the account. At one stage, I was down 30 to 50% and now I'm flat. And they are just, you know, okay, it's good. Uh, and they realize that they need to do something. And even if you're long on me and you get 20 years, you know, uh, uh, horizon, if you bought, you know, at the start, of, of February, you're down 40% after one month and you say, oh, it doesn't matter because I got a 25 years uh, uh, time horizon. This is just not true. It is extremely painful in between. Um, are the Excel uh, cheat updated uh, periodically? Yes, uh, every, every, uh, for, for the most important one, every, every month. Uh, otherwise, uh, at least every three months. Um, this is look. I'm using those those Excel spreadsheet for for my ID generation. So I updated them. Um, if we think about the main one, uh, and and uh, I'm updating them uh, quite uh, uh, quite often. You can ask people. Um, that is for real. Will you ever set up your own hedge fund? Um, I thought about it. I always thought about it. There is a bit of frustration because I want to do it. And in the meantime, you know, there is a break even cost, which is literally you need to raise 20 to 30 to 50 million. Okay. Um, I'm not a sales person. Okay. So <laughs> I'm more a trader than a sales person. So for me, raising the money is much harder. Okay. Plus, um, I want to work in a team, I want to work with people. So I don't want to do that. On my own so i want to work with people um i really want to do it at one stage i would love to do it it's about you need to understand that raising money in europe was really hard over the last 10 years um no matter what was was your performance um so you need connection you need you need to do things that i, I was not really interested my interest has always been mostly into trading um, uh, now, uh, I like to do uh, uh, a lot of mentoring. I love to do, uh, uh, go back to trading. If I can raise money with a decent mandate, uh, with the right people, I will be happy to do it. Uh, but again, you know, if I think about raising money, I know that there are many talents. I see during the mentoring uh, that there are many talented people. Last year, I came across some young people 
uh, that are working in the industry that are extremely, extremely talented. The downside of our industry, uh, my industry, is over the last 10 years, uh, uh, my industry completely sat on uh, uh, training people. So they fired 30 to 50% of the people and they were not training them anymore. And despite that, you have extremely, extremely talented people, very, very smart people. And, you know, one of my, you know, having a hedge fund, working with those people, you know, would be nice. But, you know, uh, maybe it's going to come, maybe it's not. Um, we'll see. Um, uh, okay, let's... Uh, are you ever going to set up a form of 4 by 4 traders? I want to do it. I don't know how to do it. Look, uh, uh, I don't know how many people are still online. Um, if, if you get good ideas of, of, of a forum um, for people, uh, this is something that I really uh, will consider. I don't know how to do it. I don't want to be managing, you know, 50, 100 people uh, every hour uh, that are telling me, you know, uh, some things that are not interesting. In the meantime, I know how it is hard as a trader to be on your own, and especially when you're a retail trader. So I would love to do something here. I don't know how to do it. Um, hopefully, um, if you got ideas, uh, and I'm saying good ideas, <laughs> uh, send me an email at contact at gregoiredupont.com. I would love to hear uh, what I could do. Why is setting up a hedge fund so expensive? Uh, because it's regulated, because you need to have, uh, so you need to regulate, you need to be, uh, you need to have a compliance, you need to have a risk officer. So it costs you 250 to half a million pounds. Um, that's, that's the minimum. Um, and, 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 and that means you need to raise quite a decent money uh, to start to be making money. Um, uh, what is your sharp ratio on max drawdown? I already explained that. Would you set up the hedge fund in Monaco or Cayman where it is tax free? Ah, the dream of setting up everything tax free just to not be paying, paying taxes. Um, look, when I joined, when I was working for this hedge fund in London, um, most of the senior management was in. Um, uh, not Madagascar, but um, uh, in Spain, we go to um, what's this tax haven in in, um, in in Spain, Gibraltar. Thank you. Um, so the whole team, the whole senior teams, was in Gibraltar. Why? Because in Gibraltar, you just pay no taxes; you just pay a fix. And I thought to myself, you know, okay, um, I was, you know, in my twenties. And do I really want to be living in a shithole like uh, Gibraltar just to be saving some money? So the thing about saving some money and sh living in the shithole, um, look, I'm going to be paying more taxes. This is the way it is. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it really depends. It's, uh, I don't have any, we'll see. Um, I don't think that paying taxes is always that bad. You know, it's, uh, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, we should be all paying crazy taxes, but there, there is an in-between to find. I don't know. I think those questions um, has a, a long, long way to go. Um, um, okay, last one. Um, what else do we have? Uh, so many here again, Q &A. Uh, okay. Is the speculative trading in volatile market as today is have a specific process we can learn? Or we can use the same process infrastructure in your website. So when on my website, on the 4 by 4 um, they are mainly for strategies, okay? So you get the top down, you get the bottom up, you get special situation and you get active trading. When we do active trading, you need a different setup than a long, short, one, two, three months. Why? Because you need access to data, you need live prices, you need direct access to the market. You're going to be trading different things. If you look at today, the correlation in the market was, you know, well, everything was moving the same way. What you want to be doing 
is putting the things. You want to be live saying, okay, what's the VWAP on one stock? What's the volume? What those things? If you are a retail trader with very little knowledge, it's going to be hard to do. Um, uh, yes, there are going to be a replay uh, and I'm going to put the video on, on, on YouTube uh, tomorrow or the day after. Wh what I would love for you, um, if you're happy to do it for some of you, I would love for you to contact me and um, asking me about um, subject to, uh, to talk uh, in future webinars. Um, so that will be very helpful because, uh, um, you know, I, I like the way I'm doing these things, but um, um, I got a tendency to get bored with things if I don't change things. Uh, so I would love for you to come with some good content uh, that hopefully I can bring. Um, if you have ID on the forum, I'll be happy. Uh, and if you have questions uh, about, um, uh, about the mentoring of the 4 by 4 video series, please send me an email and then, you know, uh, we can have a Skype call or, or, or where I can be answering your questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, talk to you soon. Um, and, and I'll try to do uh, in the next two weeks another webinar. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.